previously on the dragon ship one because I, I can imagine in my own life watching you know the guys pine for a certain gal and uh you know earlier early on in her her life she ends up going for you know the athletes the musicians all of that sort of stuff and then you know he is that guy like ross on friends that says if we're not married by 30 let's get together and here we comes 30 you know and she looks over at him and says you know what time to settle down uh you know i'm not finding myself anymore let's settle down so this should be a fun one to talk about phil uh let's, thanks for uh, leading us in today absolutely it's my pleasure uh, thor and so basically you know as we were talking you know earlier this week and then to get ready for the show you wanted to speak on ovulatory shift and the hypothesis behind that mark how you doing today doing great looking forward to this uh, interesting discussion excellent think, man this is going to be a good one I, I think it's a sign of the times uh the materialistic uh, society we live in today mm. 100 percent you know basically ovulatory shift is, is it's 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 an, it's an interesting topic you know i want to credit wiki because i did a little bit of research on there and uh, thor's also got some graphics that we're going to put up here as well uh, the estrus evolved for, to facilitate reproduction and maximize reproductive success or the success of passing one's genes by producing offspring that are most likely to survive and reproduce themselves the ovulatory shift hypothesis proposes that motivation and desire to mate should increase during the fertility window. So believe it or not, a lot of these girls, they go through these cycles in their hormonal month to month to month thing where it's, you know, hey, they're in ovulation, you know, estrus and all those good things. And so, yes, Thor? Would you like to see the graph while you're presenting? Yeah, that would be awesome, man. Let's do right, it. Let's do it. This is a good one, by the way. Yeah. This one kind of shows the different uh, type of uh, hormones throughout a menstrual cycle and why this is so influential on uh, female choices in men. And mm -hmm. Phil's going to give us a, a good indication of why that might be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting graphic because when you really start to listen to some of these things that they've put out here, you know, on this, there's actually scientific information about this. You know, they've actually broken it down. The obligatory sh shift hypothesis proposes the motivation and desire to mate should increase during that fertility window. And you can see that right there on the graphic. An ideal mate could have many qualities, resources to care for offspring, the physical ability and social status to protect a mate and offspring, and compatible compatible personality for long-term pair bonding it's interesting when you know in, in our space in the men's space especially the red pill community you know it's you know the younger girls are you know it's, it's it's party time and you know you know it's i'm out here and i'm looking for that that alpha itch to get scratched you know and as they they hit that that epiphany phase in their life and that that biological clock starts to tick down and they're ready to you know settle down and start having a family so i don't know so much about that pair bonding on the end of that thor what are your thoughts on that um, you know, uh, hormones definitely dry uh, play a role in particularly oxytocin after actual sex and orgasm. So I think there's a, a stronger role to play in that and the emotional bonding that occurs rather than this, this chart right here. I think this just sets up kind of, this kind of sets the, the ball on the tee ready to be driven downrange, shall we say. Mm, 100%. You know, evolutionary theory and sexual selection theory suggest that an organism's top priority should be to maximize survival and reproductive success. Thus, the obligatory shift hypothesis proposes that women possess a dual sexuality, where during the fertility window, a woman should prioritize attracting and choosing a mate with the best genetic quality or good genes, since this is the only time she can become pregnant and pass on her heritable genetic qualities to her offspring and so it kind of that kind of lays into what we talk about in this red pill space or in the, in men's self-help or whatever the men's communities you know or we'll, we'll just coin mld's phrase right it's uh, money muscles and game you know you got that status you got the physicality that's going to definitely attract women you know and so right. uh, that is that is a definite thing right there um See, you know, birth, moving birth control doesn't birth control throw a, a stick in this in the spokes of the wheel in this whole deal yeah definitely and i'm going to touch on that it does definitely and we're going to touch on that here in a little bit uh mark i will definitely hit that All okay right. definitely um you know so understanding that you know you're up against a hormonal wall guys when it comes to women and understanding how they operate it's, it's important so some research has suggested that over the evolutionary time 
women may have maximized their reproductive success by seeking good genes from extra pair copulation. Do you guys know what that means? You guys ever heard that? Ray? Make sure you get your own copy of Thor's Dominant Masculine Presence Lecture. This is an hour long lecture that teaches extremely valuable yet simple techniques that will help you to improve your dominant masculine presence. You will learn how easy it is to begin building the foundation for your masculine presence and make yourself into a dominant masculine man who knows what he wants and isn't afraid to go after it. So what are you waiting for? Buy now and start your journey and start building that dominant masculine presence and become the man that you always wanted to be.